Australians are an amazing bunch of people. They're so welcoming. I would say don't wait. A lot of people wait for the circumstances to be perfect. You know, if this happens and if this happens, we'll do it, you know, or it's got to be, maybe we'll just wait until this family member, you know, goes, or maybe we'll just do that. Um, I think you just got to take the plunge and just do it. You won't regret it. I'm Dr. Shamini Tablanche, ex-corporate and academia girl, turned CEO and board member of several companies and a mother of four little extraordinary kids. But it wasn't that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the know-how and the time to focus on designing and really going after the life that I so wanted to live. A life of freedom, of fairness and of being fair dinkum to who I really was and what I wanted to get out of this fleeting time that we have on Mother Earth. Fast forward to many lessons learned and moving halfway around the world to the most amazing country, you'll see the life that I now live. One that gives me more safety and freedom than I ever thought would be possible and that really only existed as a daydream while I was living in South Africa. I created Chamonix TV to give you true spot advice on how you can also live a life in this amazing country and so that you can see how another couple like us now live in Australia with four little kids hearing down under and I'll be providing you with step by step strategies so that you can make your Aussie dream a reality too. If you're a keen future Aussie who's looking to create a life that excites you and offers you safety, freedom and opportunity, you have come to the right place my friend. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much for joining us today, all the way from Melbourne. Day number, how much of lockdown are you now? How many? Uh, 3,050 or something like that, I think. <laughs> We've stopped counting. We've stopped oh, counting. Oh, what a year. And, and, and day number, how many of living in Australia or year number would be probably easier? Year is probably easier. We've just passed the 11 year mark now. So Ooh. yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Long time now. <laughs> yes, you're almost part of the furniture here, as they would say. Mm, Do yeah. you feel Aussie or South African? I feel a little bit of both. I always say, I think you've got one foot there and one foot here. Um, I think for us, it's, yeah, you'll never be completely Aussie. Our kids are though, like they were really small when they came. So but for me and Stefan, I think we are probably half and half. Um, I think we'll never adapt again fully to South Africa. Yeah. I think we've got a lot of Aussie in us now after 11 years, but yeah, half and half. <laughs> I think that's one of the things you probably would have to accept if you decide to immigrate, mm -hmm. is that you're always going to be this any boom any bus. I never know what the mm -hmm. English, the, say, mm -hmm. the English saying of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not South African yeah. fully anymore, and you're not Australian, and you'll always no. be somewhere in between. But as you say, mm -hmm. at least the kids mm -hmm. will will grow up feeling yeah. that they belong somewhere, which is great. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It is. I think for us, it's definitely you know, it's something you make peace with after a while. I think when you initially come here, you think, oh, you're going to be an Aussie, you know, you're going to be able to adapt and just become an Aussie. And then after a while, you realize, well, you'll adapt a little bit, but the, the Africa, you can't really get out of yourself. So <laughs> you kind of make peace of it. That's true. And, and, and nor should you really get rid of the Africa mm. because it, it's part of who we are and how we yeah. grew up and and mm. it, it, it influences the way we think and what we do and what mm, we say. Yeah, and, absolutely, yeah. And I really enjoy having that rich background because mm. you know, if, I, if I didn't grow up in South Africa, I would never have had the experience of all nature offers there in terms of yeah. the wildlife and you know, so many other mm. things that are absolutely beautiful. Mm. Now I still enjoy it when I go for a holiday in South Africa. So mm. you see, I can still have that too. Yeah, too, so yeah with my can. family yeah definitely so tell us tell us a little bit about your journey to australia how that had happened for you and what were the decisions that you made who decided first okay <laughs> maybe we should try yeah. going there i think for us it was a little bit of a the grass must be greener this side we went through three armed robberies in south africa we used to oh. live in pretoria so it was just 
you know, a bad situation. My husband started thinking about it. He probably molded over for a year before he talked to me. And I was like dead set against it. I was like, mm-hmm. there is no way I'm not moving across the ocean. I'm not leaving my family. This is the right thing. So I kind of made peace with it on the look and see. And then we went back to South Africa and it took us about three years, um, you know, from, from start to finish um, to actually set foot in Australia. Um, Stefan came over first. He was here for about eight weeks before me and the kids came. Um, and he kind of cold turkeyed it. He left his job in South Africa, didn't have any prospects or anything over here, um, booked a plane ticket, you know, packed our house into containers. Uh, lived, I lived with my, grand, with my mother-in-law for a while. And then, um, yeah, we immigrated. And yeah, he found a job. I think he's got this story where the, he landed on the Friday and the Sunday night he woke up in a panic. Um, where is he going to find a job? How is he, how, how are we going to survive? You know, me and the kids are on our way. Um, and he ended up just jumping online and searching for jobs, applying for anything he could find. Tuesday morning, he had his first interview and Tuesday afternoon, they called him. He had the job and he started straight oh, wow. away. And yeah, it was just lucky. That is incredible. Wow. Mm. And is that, that's surely not the same job he's in at the moment. Yeah. It's not no, 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 no. He, he stuck out for about two. It was, it was actually a company that was moving to, to Sydney and um, they just wanted to tie things up. So he was part of that team and then the company um, moved to Sydney and then he got a new job at a bank here in Australia and he's still working for them. So yeah. Really so happy. he's in finance. Yes, yes, yes. He, he was a chartered accountant in South Africa. He's actually not that much in finance anymore. He's more of a manager now. So, yeah. Yes, so that happens uh, usually with people who start off, you know, I would say not at the bottom, but, you know, lower, lower mm, down. Mm. You start off as an accountant or an engineer or whatever, and then you mm, end up mm. being a people manager. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> as Something you work like your way that. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So you went straight to Melbourne? Yes, yes. So we had our friends over here um, and they put us up in the house or with them. We lived with them for about three months, which was tricky. Um, but they were lovely. They were so amazing and gracious and generous to us. So um, introduced us to all of their friends, you know, and just made it feel like home. And I think that really helped with now tell me a little bit about your children. How many do you mm. have and how old are they? I've got two, so a boy and a girl. Ruben's the oldest. He's um, just turned 18. And then I've got Isabella and she is turning 16 tomorrow. So, yeah, we've got a birthday tomorrow. You've almost got an empty nest soon. Or- oh, it was a very bittersweet day today actually because it was his last school day today so yeah off to exams so I dropped him off at school this morning and I was quite teary thinking oh can't believe we've you know 13 years of schooling is done so oh wow crazy well at at least he managed to have a last day of official schooling (laughs) even though it's locked down yeah didn't they just yes yeah yeah I think he's only had three weeks now back at school so yeah and everything is strange like the formal was cancelled you know everything's just up in the air so it's not just not a nice year for them how did they do exams assuming they did well, do exams uh they're still doing exams so today was the last formal school day so his exam starts in two weeks um and they're gonna do it at school so yeah they've just got uh-huh. i think that they're doing it in smaller groups um you know strict rules regarding the safety of the the COVID procedures and stuff like that so yeah and do the school children have to wear masks in Melbourne yes 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 Mm -hmm. they're quite used to it actually but I I said to my daughter this morning you're actually being homeschooled except I'm not your teacher (laughs) she's been you know most of the year she's been in front of a a computer in the kitchen so yeah yeah, it's been strange very very strange so your children Mm -hmm. were six and eight give or take when you moved here how yeah, was so, that settling in for them? Um, very, very tricky. Um, Bella, easy. She was four when we came. So she went straight into kinder and she, she picked up the language very easily. I think because she was so small. 
Ruben was middle of year one um, and that was really tricky like mm. we really struggled I think um, it was he, he didn't understand a word of English when we came um, so this Afrikaans boy you know is starting middle of the year in a class mm. he knows nobody can't speak the language um, then you know the kids over year in year one they can write folio pages whereas you know in, in year one in South Africa you're only starting learning to read so for him it was really a challenge you know he was behind um, but the school was absolutely amazing they had a one-on-one -on -one teacher with him every day working with him um, and helped him catch up they had a school psychologist see him you know to to work with the transition as well um yeah so yeah he caught up and mm. was got that there in, a in the end. public or in a private school it was a public school it was a public school yeah yeah the nice thing about melbourne specifically is there's so many immigrants so it's not unusual so the schools are really geared towards english as your second language so um they've got specialist teachers that help the kids out and sit one-on-one -on -one, you know teach mm -hmm. them how to read and write and all of that mm -hmm. so it's pretty cool and yourself, you mentioned earlier that you're a creative person. So what yeah. does that mean? What what do you do? I assume you have a business in which you yeah. make something. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a tattoo artist actually. I've got my own tattoo studio. Yeah. How fabulous is that? I'm gonna fly yeah. to Melbourne to come to you because I'm still a, I still want to have my first tattoo, and we we want tattoos yeah. on our fingers, and we've yeah. been told that apparently most tattoo artists don't do tattoos or they just refuse tattoos on the fingers i'm like yeah surely i'll find somebody <laughs> <laughs> you'll find somebody yeah yeah no no it's a fun job and how long have you been doing that for i'm now in probably five years that i've got my own studio yeah i got um i was a, a graphic designer in south africa um mm -hmm. when we came over did that for a while but then really spent time with the kids trying to help them adapt um, and then went more into fine arts over here. So I had a few exhibitions and then started teaching uh, mm -hmm. art. And I still teach art on a Monday. Um, started teaching art and then um, got approached by a cosmetic tattoo artist. Um, you wanted to know if I would want to be interested in learning the skill. Started doing that for about six months, but got really bored um, doing eyebrows day in and day yeah, out. <laughs> Because it's just a line every time. There's no creativeness yeah, yeah. to it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So then, um, yeah, started up my own shop and never looked back. That's mm. awesome. And do you do that from home? Yes. So I'm actually in my tattoo studio at the moment. I was so having a look behind so you. I love your background. Yeah, it looks really thanks. cool. There's my chair. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> that is so cool. And yeah, are you still able to stuff. operate now with lockdown? I'm assuming. No. So actually this year I haven't worked. Um, I've, I've been in lockdown longer than I've worked this year. So it's been pretty, pretty stressful, oh, but not really, not really because I've, I've got the studio at home. So, and I mean, the government's been amazing. Like we've got job people. Um, so every week I get paid by the government basically for not being able to work. So that's been a, a good help. So. Yeah. Yes, true. Well, how else? You've got no option mm. because you want to yeah, work. Yeah. And, you can't. and that yeah. brings me to another good point of Australia. Australia has been so supportive, mm. even though we've had really strict lockdown rules. It's just been so great in assisting mm. people like yourself mm. to still earn an income, even mm. though yeah. you're not working. I don't know if you know any more about South Africa, but from what I've heard is that it's they mm. didn't have this kind of financial support um, mm, no, definitely to them. not yeah no so, i think for for me it was a an absolute eye-opener that just the ease of it as well you apply you know and every week like clockwork you know there's money in my account um i think a lot of people are suffering you know especially if you've got a bigger business if you had rent to pay and stuff like that i was really fortunate that i'm working from home so i don't really have overheads and things um so for me, it was actually, you know, a blessing in disguise. Um, yeah, so, but I mean, the country is actually pretty, people outside look at us and think, oh, you know, you've been in lockdown and it's been so bad. But I think a lot of people have had positive changes during this time, which it's, it's been good. Would you do it again all over if you had to? Yes. 
<laughs> yes, no, definitely. What, what do you enjoy the most about living in Australia? I think we're way more outdoorsy than we were in South Africa, um, especially because we went through the, the crime, you know, set of crimes at our house. We didn't get out that much, you know, and if you wanted to go out, it usually cost you a bit of, bit of money. You wanted to, you know, you have to spend a lot to go somewhere where it's safe or, you know, to experience nature. We're over here, especially in Melbourne, we've got the snow 50 kilometers away. We've got the beach 50 kilometers away. You know, you've got the rainforest 50 kilometers away. And then we live right across from um, a massive nature reserve with a gorge. And so we go walking every day. You know, it's just oh. amazing, amazing place to be. Um, so I think the nature part of it's been, you know, even though a lot of us miss the animals and like the Kruger National Park and the stuff in South Africa, there's a good, good amount of nature over here to enjoy. But as I said earlier, you know, you can still go to South Africa and have a holiday yeah. and see the animals. You don't, you, you actually don't need to go to South Africa to do that. You can go to Kenya to experience it. You mm. can go to Zambia or Botswana yeah. or so many other places as well. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. It's at least here you have safety every day you have security yes, you have financial mm. security um, and I think mm. just the relief that goes along with that mm. whereas you don't have to worry about those things um, yeah definitely is, oh it makes such a difference tell me a little bit about your husband and his work how did he settle into his job was he okay and what does he think about mm. the industry here compared to South Africa um, I think for him it was I think we've often talked about it. a lot of South Africans come here and they think, oh, you know, they step in in the same level that they're going to step, you know, that they stepped out of in South Africa. And I think it was you have to eat a bit of humble pie. You have to work mm. your way up. Um, we've often said you almost take 10, 10 years backwards. You know, you start again in your career. But Australians are an amazing bunch of people. They're so welcoming. So he's never really struggled, but he did have to start lower. He had less yeah. managerial skills, you know, or, or he wasn't known, you know, you've got mm. no connections. You've got no, um, you know, people that, that can say, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. So you have to prove yourself all over again. So I think that yeah. part of it was tough. I remember him saying as well the the things that were tough were going out socially, um, mm. you know, not growing up here. You don't have the history. People will reference TV shows or things that they've watched in the 80s or, you know, reference types of beers and you kind of mm. lost. You don't know um, what to order and, you know, what to talk about. And especially when they speed up in a social environment and there's lots of loud music and things, you can't hear people well. It takes time to learn <laughs> the language yes. because Australian English and South African English is not the same thing. <laughs> very, oh, yeah. very true. Last question. What is your favourite place in Australia? My favourite place in Australia? Oof trying to think or Apollo a Bay at the moment or a holiday Apollo Bay at the moment yeah. um it's just our go-to place it's um close to us it's about two hours drive from Melbourne it's close to um Great Ocean Road or it's on Great Ocean Road it's close to the 12 apostles really pretty very peaceful you kind of get that Hermanus Pringle yeah. Bay, Betty's Boy kind of vibe over there, which is kind of nice. Yeah, so that's our go-to place. But we haven't, I must say, even though we've been here 10 years, we haven't explored enough of Australia yet. Get a motorhome or a caravan and a 4 by 4 whichever yeah. way you want to do it, and drive around Australia. Yeah. It is an incredible journey, I have yeah. to say. We, we did it end of last year with our four mm. little kids. And I... Like, seriously, I would suggest that mm. not just to overseas people moving here, but also mm. to Australians, because there are many Australians who haven't done that. Yeah. You, you experience the country in another way. And you also see, mm. I want to say, like four seasons in one day. It's like you see mm. all it has to offer in the trip. You see desert, you see mm. tropical areas. Yeah. You know, it's just so in such an incredible journey to do. Mm. Um, but yes, um, the Great Ocean Road, where you guys are very near to is one of the most spectacular mm. drives that you can undertake yeah, in Australia. It oh, it's gorgeous there. Yeah, it's gorgeous, yeah. 
Thank you so much um, for sharing your journey and your story with pleasure. us, Liesl. It's been really great mm. hearing how you guys have settled in and how mm. you've made Australia your home. And um, do you have any parting thoughts that you would like to share with our viewers if they're considering coming to Australia? What would you say to them? Um, well, I, I think there's two things. The one I would say is don't wait. A lot of people wait for the circumstances to be perfect. You know, if this happens and if this happens, we'll do it, you know, or it's got to be maybe we'll just wait until this family member, you know, goes or maybe we'll just do that. Um, I think you just got to take the plunge and just do it. Yeah. You won't regret it. And the second thing is once you're here, try and make good memories as quick as possible. Mm. Just, you know, build your, fill your life with Australian memories and then the South African ones won't hurt as much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wonderful words of advice. Thanks so much again, Liesl. And um, it's a pleasure. we hope lockdown is over for you guys very quickly. <laughs> Thank you. We do too. <laughs> we'll do. Take Thanks. care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you had fun, please remember to hit that subscribe button and then it'll make sure that you never miss a thing. I'll see you same time and same place next week. Bye for now. <laughs>